In this video we're going to discuss backgrounds. Now specifically we're going to be discussing page backgrounds but uh, backgrounds can also be applied to layers as well which we'll get into uh, shortly. But let's uh, get into our page properties by right clicking, choosing page properties and then going into style. Under style top portion of this palette is our backgrounds. We have several different options and let's just walk through these one by one. First of all is our solid. Pretty self-explanatory. We can click on any of the colors to make it a solid color. Simple enough. Page properties, style. Now when we click on our color palette here, not only we show up recent, recent colors that I've worked with, give us a, a nice selection of colors, but if we click on more colors, if you have specific hex values or HTML values, you can actually enter them here. If the color you need has to be specific, you can just enter them here, click OK, and there we have it. You can do gradients. Once again, you can be specific with the color you want, or you can just choose a random color here. As you see, the left side, or the right side rather, is going to be the top. Left side is going to be the bottom. So let's just choose this to a friendlier color there. Green, purple, whatever that color is. And let's see what this gradient looks like. Okay, that, that's not too bad. Not too bad. All right, page properties, style, do patterns and patterns, well, patterns are patterns. Once again, we're using the purple and the green to create this dark vertical pattern here. Let's just see what that looks like real quick. Not bad, actually, not bad. Page properties, I'm right clicking, page properties, style. Uh, let's just, and there, there, there are many in here, and you, and you can play with and, and spend your time looking at these. And I, and I suggest you do because there's really some cool ones in here. Let's. Uh, I'm going to stick with these two colors, and you can change these two colors. Obviously, this is called weave. Let's see what weave looks like. Wow, I like that one too. Not too bad. All right, right click, page properties, style. All right, we also have texture. Um, in texture, it comes preloaded pre with several different textures in here, and let's just uh, click on this. That's kind of dark, I think. Let's see what that looks like. Eh, not too bad. Wood grain, whatever. But once again, right click, page properties, style, and like I said, there are quite a few in here that you can play with. Some are subtle, some are a little bit more like this wood grain is rather stand out in your faces. Here's uh, this one here is uh, a little bit more subtle, subdued. And of course, your background is just as it implies. It's going to be a background. So all your text and imagery on your web page will be built on top of this background. Okay. We can also add imagery. Let's go to here. Um, actually, let me let me show you how I got here. So I'm gonna. Click New Page, Page Properties, Style, and instead of Solid, click Image. I'm going to scroll to the folder that I want to grab my image from, and here's this castle picture that I, that I want to use. I'm going to open this up, click OK, and there is my castle picture. Now this, this image is huge. And let me let me show you this by doing F5 or page preview from your toolbar, and you can see that is huge. You're not even seeing part of my image here, or most of the image rather. Um, so let's X out of this and get back to here. Now the way to fix this is I can. Go back in my right click page properties, style, image, 
and then right here by default it's left blank which really means it is fixed let's try cover click OK F5 to preview it yeah, it looks pretty good Cover it gives you aspect ratio, which means it kind of keeps its proportion no matter how big your screen is. So you, right about here would be a tablet size. Then as we scroll down to here, we would be in cell phone size. Okay. Squeezes back out. And as you see, as I scroll, it gets bigger. Now, you're seeing a double image here, and that's because Cover will place the image underneath it again if that space is needed. So, when working with images, you have to be very careful and you have to experiment with your website itself as you're building it out. Because sometimes your image may not be long enough for the entire page. If we do the F5 in preview, as you can see, if our web page was only this big, we would be okay. But if we had lots of stuff built out and going further down the page, our picture would end. So it would have to start back over again. So when working with imagery in WYSIWYG Web Builder, you need to be careful about what image you use so that you don't fall into that problem. Let's uh, try one more aspect of uh, page properties, right click page properties, style, and then we're going to come into 100%, 100%. Now 100%, 100% will not keep the aspect ratio. I'm going to show you that right now by hitting F5 on the keyboard. And we drag this in, and as you see, the picture becomes distorted. So that's 100%, 100%. It does not keep the aspect ratio. But it is an alternative. And you're going to have to experiment with these. This is, this is uh, when working with imagery on a web page as a background, it's all experimentation. So when choosing your images, if, you're, like, if, you're, if your web page is going to be built out fairly long, then, uh, well, then you're either going to have to vary up your background or find an image that's very long. Um, but these are options, and some good options. There's a third option as well, and we can use a video as a background. Let's go over here. Here I have a, a YouTube object on my page, and this can be anywhere. It can be outside of the build area, which is for this uh, default case is right here. It can be outside of the build area. It can be inside the build area. I'm going to right click on this. And, and how I got here is, of course, by coming over to my toolbox. And choosing YouTube. Dragging it out. Hence the box here right click on it which will open up the or we can actually double click on it which will open the page properties I paste it in the, the, the URL of the YouTube video and we want to make sure that there are four things checked autoplay loop use modest branding and here's what makes it a full screen background make sure the layout is clicked with fill entire browser window. Click OK and let's F5 for preview. The video will load from YouTube 
and there we have it. Now, once again, this is similar to imagery. It's only going to be so big, but this makes really impressive um, landing pages or lead capture pages. Um, and it's actually really good for uh, layers, which we'll get into a little bit later, which are smaller aspects of a website. Now, I just went on YouTube and found this one in like five seconds, but um, I have it on loop. I think it's like a 30 some odd second thing. So that's why you see that little dark spot there uh, relooping. So my suggestion would be maybe find a lar larger video, longer video. Um, but like I said, this is great for if you want to put some text on a page that says, hey, if you're interested in more information, you know, fill in your email address here, blah, blah, blah. Great for lead capture uh, web pages, landing pages, uh, similar stuff to that. All right, so let me so we let's recap a little bit. We got video, um, of which uh, WYSIWYG Web Builder allows for YouTube and Vimeo backgrounds for video. You can do graphics. And of course, textures, colors, gradients, and patterns. All right, that was rather quick, and I hope you absorbed it all. But like I said, uh, to get to your page properties, just right click, page properties, and then style. Okay, that'll get you into your section where you need to work with your backgrounds. All right, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.